Okay. Looks good. All right. All right. Much yep. Well. I see what's happening. This is, as uh, introduced, Order from Chaos, a standardized collection of COVID-19 resources and epidemiological data. I'm Julia Mullen. I'm joined by Minar al uh, At first, I'm going to just talk a little bit about why and what Outbreak.info is, uh, and then I'm going to go a little bit into our scientific resource discovery tool. Then Minar will show our epidemiological visualization tool and talk a little bit about how you can get this data for yourself by downloading it, fetching it, or importing it. So let's kick this off. And I'd like to first talk about how information is growing. So scientific resources are continuing to be created by people and on COVID-19 is no exception, uh, which is wonderful, uh, the amount of impact that this virus and disease has had in our lives obviously warrants an amount of attention, uh, but it is difficult because scientific research is not just disseminated through publications, but also through clinical trials, data sets, protocols, and more. So Outbreak.info combines uh, information from different knowledge repositories, um, and it not only combines all of that information, uh, but it also provides a standardized interface. And in order to do that, we have to do standardization on the data itself. So in this example, you can see four different date formats, for instance, and um, they're standardized to this kind of ISO uh, format. Um, this is not just you know, the only example. Uh, all of these different knowledge repos repositories have sometimes very different ways of talking about things. So we combine those so that you can filter and interact with that data in a meaningful way and do more of an apples to apples comparison. To date, Outbreak.info has over 70,000 resources aggregated against, uh, across 12 different repositories. And you might be wondering, what kinds of questions can I answer with Outbreak.info? So let's talk about that by going to Outbreak.info. Um, I'm going to move over here to the resources tab because that's what we're going to be discussing. I'm going to view all of the resources and I'll make the screen a little bit bigger. There we are. And let's say you're interested in the efficacy of remdesivir as a treatment. Um, so you might search remdesivir and you would be able to find, again, not just publications, but also clinical trials, data sets, image objects. Let's say you're only interested since you know July, you'd be able to do that uh, and filter based on that. You can filter also based on the source based on the funder, the trial intervention, the measurement technique, um, anything you could possibly want. And if you still want more, please let us know and we'll make it available. Um, so if I go here and I search for the you know, data set, you would find you know, a data set on remdesivir and rhesus macaques. Um, so that's very interesting. I'm going to, um, this is just kind of scratching the surface of ways that you can use this tool, uh, but there's obviously much more that you can do with it. Uh, but now I'm going to pass it over to Minar, who is going to discuss our epidemiological visualizations. So like Julia mentioned, there's also um, epidemiological visualization available on Outbreak.info. So for example, um, the data is visualized across space and time, and that allows users to track how the pandemic has um, spread or how COVID spread across the world during the pandemic. Um, and you can see on the right, we showcase the five highest and five lowest um, countries in the world. And so um, we can play this animation. You can see in late March, early April, Europe is experiencing its first peak of um, COVID-19 at the same time as the US. Um, and then you can watch as time progresses, how they, how they manage to get their cases under control up until um, the US starts increasing again in July. Um, and then you can also start to see an increase in Europe around late August, and then you start seeing a real second spike around mid-September. And so you can download this data, you can download the visualization, and you can also download the raw data just really easily by clicking down below. And then you can also focus in on the U.S. specifically, so on the county level. 
And so say you're interested in one specific county, like San Diego County, for example, you can also compare outbreaks. To, you can compare outbreaks in, similar, in places that have similar populations as San Diego on our outbreak and compare. So, so here you can see other places in the U.S. are similar to San Diego in population. And um, you can look at their epidemiological curves and there are hypotheses about why these places that have similar population sizes have had different um, trends, had, had different epidemiological curves or dynamics during the outbreak. Um, so if you could go back to the slides, Julia. So you can also access this data directly, not just as visualizations, but also as raw data that you can analyze or visualize through the API. And so this API powers outbreak.info on the back end. Um, you can do this by going to api.outbreak.info and querying. So you based on location name, and you can also indicate which fields you're interested in including. We also have um, an R package that serves as a wrapper for this API so that you can import this data directly into R. So you can use just one line of code to pull this data into R, and you can create a visualization as um, you can see on the right, or you can use this data, obviously, for analysis or modeling. And so say, for example, you're interested in epi curves for certain states in the US, and you want to see how um, the first the day of introduction has affected their um, outbreaks. So you can see that, for example, Washington and California both had introductions at similar times, but Washington had two distinct peaks, whereas California had one late peak around um, August. You can see that New York and Louisiana, again, had similar introduction times when New York had one large early peak, whereas Louisiana had a smaller early peak and then a second peak in late July, early August. Well, thank you very much. Um, in summary, use Outbreak.info to discover scientific resources related to COVID-19. Use Outbreak.info to visualize the COVID-19 pandemic and use our data by downloading it from the site using the API or, the R or our R package. If you have COVID-19 related data, uh, definitely get in touch uh, either via our Twitter, um, sending us an email or contributing to our GitHub. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julia Amanar, uh, for your presentation. Um, 